I have a little surprise for you that I brought along. I know how much you are going to need. It was very hard to get my hands on it, but I got it by first using my head. It's dynamite. I stole it from the Rojos. And now it seems to me the moment's come for you to light the fuse. Kyure, ko Erin Fawcett toku ingoa no Tamaki Makoto aho. My name is Erin Forsyth, and I'm from Auckland. I'm an artist based here, um, but I've been looking all around the country in the past 18 months while I've been studying native and endemic flora and fauna and the ecological systems in which they dwell and are reliant on and which in turn they sustain. I've been illustrating my research and I thought a good way to further illustrate it would be with a series of video interviews. The first of which is this video on the Pekka Pekka or native bats. It started with a trip out to West Auckland to the Auckland Council Biodiversity Office to meet with Ben Paris, also known as the New Zealand Batman. My name is Ben Paris. I am a Senior Biodiversity Advisor at Open Council. Most people know me as New Zealand Batman. I have a real passion for bats. What sort of bats are there in New Zealand? We did have three species. Uh, the greater short-tailed bat has now got extinct. Now there is just the short-tailed bat and um, the long-tailed bat, which we find more here in Auckland. Māori used the name Pika Pika. Are they scary? Would they bite you if you saw one? People are very scared about bats because of Hollywood sort of stuff with um, Dracula and vampires. But bats are very harmless. In New Zealand there's no blood-sucking bats. The um, long-tailed bat that we have in Auckland just flies along and eats a whole lot of little insects, providing us with some insect control. How big are these bats and what do they look like? So the long-tailed bat is about the size of your thumb and about the wingspan of your hand and weighs about the same weight as about a couple of two dollar coins. Their habitat is like under bark um, of tree. Um, they like to get under there and snug in really tight um, to keep warm. So the three things we tell people to look for when they're looking for bats is big, old, mature trees. Um, ones with big gnarly branches that best or even loose bark. The second thing is near streams and waterways where they can feed off the insects that come off the water at night and they use those streams as sort of highways um, to feed, feed off. And then the third one is near open space. So um, big open areas near the edge of the bush. So we've found um, schools and golf courses and parks are really good places to look for bats. If people find bats or if they think that they have bats in their yard, should, what should they do? Should they poke them with a stick? Bat detector. It uses the echolocation calls and picks them up in these microphones here and um, turns the sound that we can't hear into something that we can hear. So it produces a whole lot of little clicks. So the clicking is, is a type of echolocation. They produce the sound in their mouths. Um, the sound wave hits something like a tree and then um, comes back into their really big ears that they have. They can pinpoint a tiny little mosquito in the middle of the night and know where that is just using the echolocation. So before humans arrived, um, the only major predator would have been the mopok or the ruru. Um, but now we've introduced mammals like the feral cats, the possums, the rats, the mustelids. They are very, very vulnerable. As just a general member of the public, what could I do or what could anyone do to help? Grab one of these bat detectors from the Auckland Council, they're free to borrow and you can go out looking for bats in your own backyard. Um, the park rangers also do bat walks during January which are very, very popular. Uh, so you have to get in book in them um, by December. I've been advising for people to do stream restoration 
um, to help bats because that stream habitat is really, really important for the bats feeding. So doing some planting alongside your stream, cleaning up the stream, taking out all that rubbish and making sure that, that, that there's a lot more insect life in that stream so that bats can move into that habitat. Why should people care and why, why do they need protection? What, what is important about bats and biodiversity? <laughs> I think that New Zealand birds get a lot of attention, um, but our bats are le less known. These bats are really, really special, they're unique to New Zealand and we need to make sure that we protect them so that future generations can see these bats. Um, they're a key part of our ecosystem and we need to try and protect them as much as possible. After meeting with Ben, I received an email introduction from him to a woman named Deborah Searchfield, who works with the Pika Pika to Porto at the Auckland Zoo. Okay, she suggested I join her for one of their regular wings. So my name's Deborah Searchfield and I'm a bird keeper here at Auckland Zoo, um, mainly for native birds, but I also have responsibility for our collection of lesser short-tailed bats. Thanks for having me here at the zoo today. Can you tell us where we are? Yeah, sure. Um, we are in our bat enclosure, where we've got a very small colony of just um, two little short-tailed bats here at the moment. Um, and so what we're doing at the moment is we're just sort of giving them up for the checkup and we'll just visually have a look at them, we'll weigh them, I think they're in this box here. We'll just check it with a red light because that's easier on them. We can work out exactly where they are. I always weigh them first. How do you see them moving? So that's 35.5 plus the weight of my bag, so I just need to weigh my bag after I'm going to put it in. Mm -hmm. I don't have a very good grip on them at the moment, so I'm just going to have to slightly adjust my hold. These guys are very bitey, so they're very, not very sharp teeth. They're like a little mouse. What I'm going to do is, while I have them in hand, just put them with the wings to check that they're in good shape. Wow. You can see their wing really is just like a hand that we get done, and these are the big ones here. Great, well these are beautiful drawings of Mycetocena tuberculata, or the lesser short-tailed bat, and it's a great way to have a look at their anatomy. So you can see from this um, back view, their wonderful spread of their wings, um, their forearms here, and then this is their thumb, the front claw is their thumb, and each of these extending down are actually like the fingers on a hand. And this membrane between their fingers is absolutely, um, it's very strong, it's very translucent, um, but that gives them that amazing ability to fly. And then those wings can fold right back up against the body, and you can see here there's actually a bit of membrane, that, and the wings tuck right in and almost disappear when they're holding them straight against their body. Now they're quite robust little bats, these are quite robust forelimbs, and their back limbs, and that's because the bats spend a lot of time down on the ground, scrambling around through the leaf litter or along branches or up tree trunks, hunting for their food on the ground. They need the sensors that they're relying on as their hearing and their echolocation. 
So you can see too that they've got their little free tail here, this little one here, um, and that gives them their name, the lesser short-tailed bat. So you do have to be very careful when you're getting, removing them from boxes. They're little and they hold on with their little claws and so you don't want to TV. 